So good morning everybody, my name is Barnaby, I'm from XMA, we're a premier partner for Google um, in the UK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to speak to you guys about my story of how I use Astro Education within my school and how it helped me um, with my A-levels as well. Um, and then I'm going to speak to you about what else there is within Google that schools don't quite mm, know about. So, a bit about me. I'm straight out of Sixth Hall. I left school at the end of the last academic year and started at XMA. Oh, hang on, this is a I'm sorry. Yes, so straight out of Sixth Hall. And my secondary school was one of the first schools in the UK to go Google. My sixth form had Google Apps for Education, but they didn't really use it. And um, I've been using Apps for Education for about five years within school, and then I've helped schools in this, um, my last year here, um, to go Google. Um, and finally, as you may have noticed, I have a stammer. It hasn't stopped me, um, and it won't in the future, um, but bear with me. So this here is my secondary school. On one day, they went Google. And it was excellent. They had full adoption um, throughout the whole school, um, eventually. But at the start, there were only a few students who had apps for education, um, uh, who had access to apps for education. So we were digital leaders um, for the school, much like these guys over here, I understand. Um, and the idea was that we would work with staff to, to, to see how this would work within a school environment, how it would fit in with the um, school as it was at that, at that time. So as digital leaders, we were the first in the school to, to, to have an account. And to put into perspective how easy it is to use, as I'm sure you guys here have, have found, you give any student any one of these devices and they will use it without a hitch. It, it was like that I used us for education since I was a day old. Not quite, but you know what I mean. <coughs> so at school we also had a no bags policy. So what this meant was instead of having bags that we loved around every day, we loved around our exercise books for the lesson that we had, which would help us to be more organised, was what the idea of that was. And so students lugged around the exercise books and also textbooks for the lesson that they had next. So what the Chromebooks did, all the students who were digital leaders had one of these as their own school device that they would use within the lesson. The school eventually um, had these school-wide within sets um, across different departments. Um, but using this meant that I didn't have to look around an exercise book, I didn't have a tech, well I did have a textbook, but it meant that I had one device that I could access all of the work that I'd ever done in school, as I'm sure those of you who are using Google Apps have found. So the wow factor was, th that was the reaction, sort of the reaction from my peers, was how did you get that, where's it from, what's it for, what's it called? Then as soon as they saw something like this, which is collaboration within Google Docs, um, then the students were hooked. The, 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 the lessons that we had became a lot more fun because we could see all students on one document at one time. So I was then invited to speak at BET on the Google and Samsung stands around the work that we'd done within the local community. And so for a week's work experience, I went to this school in my local town and we took them Google. So we led some lessons, we showed them how they could use Google Slides, Docs and Sheets. And one of the lessons that we did was um, a day in the life of a, of a Riverside student. So um, students were in some groups of five and they all had their own device which we gave them. And um, one student within that group would share a slide deck with, a, with another student in the group. And then as soon as the student saw the 
collaboration that we saw a minute ago, then their faces just were beaming with smiles because they could see each other on, their, on, on, on exactly the same, same document at exactly the same time. So one student would write and then the other student would see their writing. And that for them was a real hook. So they have now gone Google. By six one, they had Google Apps for Education, but they didn't really use it in the school. So they had all of these apps available to them, but they only used two of them, which were sites and, and, uh, and also email as well. But they were all still available. So having used all of these applications throughout my GCSEs and year nine as well, there was no way that I was using Office Suite again, because I knew how this could help me in school. So, all of those were still available. So that, if I if I'd gone back to using Office, then I would have lost the any time, anywhere learning, which I've become so used to within my GCSEs. So we then went to Australia um, for three weeks, and one of those weeks was still within within school term time. And I still had loads and loads of work that I had to do, and so my teachers were still emailing me as they would have done. I left all my schoolwork at home, I left my laptop at home and everything. Um, but there was still work that I had to do, so I signed on to a device in the hotel in Australia, and I picked up my work exactly as I would have done if I was in the UK over there. So I still work, I could still hand in my assignments, I could still r respond to my, uh, my teacher's emailing. I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that, I need to update this, etc. And that for me was really, really strong. So I've now been using Apps for Education and um, doc sheets and slides within school. So what else is there available? Well, my sixth form school had something like this. Um, and this is an intranet. And they uh, use this for year seven through to year 13. But it was mainly aimed at year seven through to 11 students. And as a sixth former, I didn't think that there was much on there which was available for students. So I made this intranet, and this is sixth form specific, it's locked down, so only students within the sixth form are able to access it, and um, it's all sixth form specific. And what I wanted was the sixth formers to own this site. I wanted them to put forward feedback of what they would like on the site, um, and I also um, asked them to, um, to, I asked other students within the sixth form editors as well and own certain areas of the site and this was something which a sixth form was absolutely loved so down here um, on the right hand side there's a google form which students submit their feedback to and one of the feedback items was to have something from bbc news so we added in this news feed here and then down here there's also a um, a sheet that, that, that's embedded in the um, in the site of free rooms that students within the sixth form are able to use um, in their free time. And then there's links up here for other apps which a school use. And that's still being used now in the sixth form. So I was then off on a ski trip with school and um, this, this the, the, the school had a no phones policy. So students weren't able to could take their phones with them and speak to speak to mummy and daddy who had funded their whole ski trip for them. So I thought, well, why don't we make a blog? So we made this. And this is somewhere where mums and dads are able to go and find out where we are, what we've done, and um, what's happened in the day. So we've got um, updates here of where we are, if we're on our way back, if we're on our way to the resort. And then up here, we've got a photo gallery, which is photos from the day. We've got webcams of the resorts, which we're staying in, which were linked live back to, um, which were live images. So say that um, you went onto that tab, then you would see the, the, the most up-to-date image from the, um, from the webcam site. We also had important documents, so instead of a school handing out sheets and sheets of paper, here's a kit list, here's what the, what's happening, you need to be here at X time. Um, all of that 
went up there, which Mountain Desert were able to access through their smartphones, they were able to access that at their workplace and, and at home as well. So the school saved loads and loads of paper through doing that. And then you've got updates and a so forecast as well. We also had a blog on there which students would uh, contribute to every day. Um, so Mountain Desert were able to read what we'd done. So there's all this communication going from the ski resort in Italy to home, but there isn't anything that goes from home to Italy. So we added in a message board. And what this is, is a form that's on this site that mums and dads are able to send them a message to their loved one on the school trip. And what we said to mums and dads was, um, email us in a, um, a message for your son or daughter, um, but it will be read out to everybody while they're at dinner. So what that meant was loads and loads of embarrassing stuff from mums and dads. It's died. Loads and loads of embarrassing stuff through from mums and dads. And the students had red faces, um, other students were falling about laughing. The teachers on the trip who actually read all of this out um, were absolutely Start. And um, it was just really, really good. It was a really nice end for the day. So then um, I made an option site. So I was made head boy in the school in year 13. And in doing that, I was able to work with um, senior leadership in the school and also the school admin. And I saw things that a um, normal student, if you like, within the school wouldn't have seen. And one of those that stood out for me was the process of GCC options. So what would happen is a school would have students a booklet, and in that booklet there are about 30 pages that um, said exactly what that student would do within that subject. So you'd have um, history page, French page, etc. Um, and then with that booklet, you, you would also have a form as well. So the school had to make up the booklets, have them printed off, and sent to the school. A huge, huge, Cost. Then you've also got um, those that lose the booklets as well. So I made this option site. So this would um, replace the need for the booklet. So on here you've got all of the information which would have been within the booklet but on a site. And the school can update this as and when they please. All of the information is within a Google slide, um, which a school owner have access to. So say that the uh, French um, syllabus altered, then you could go on to your slide and edit that and it would be live, instead of having to reprint off a whole booklet. So then there was the form. So once the students had selected uh, their options, they then filled in the form and handed that in. So uh, there was a lady in the admin office who had to fill in all of these forms and take the information from the forms and stick that into a spreadsheet. So what the Google form did is that took all of the information which would have been captured through the options form and removed the need for the admin person to, to be uploading all of that manually from the form into a spreadsheet. So once you submit your options through the online form, it then goes into a spreadsheet which looks like this. The, uh, the mum or dad who filled in the form uh, with the student would then get an email saying, dear um, Stuart M. Woodruff, um, your son, son Barnaby's options are X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And that, that, that was a confirmation for the mum and dad who had, um, who would have sent the form in with the student in the hope that the student would actually um, hand that in to the school. So then the mail mode would happen, and um, and then the mum and dad would have confirmation of that student's options in their inbox, which they could then um, refer back to in the future. So we asked for feedback, and as this was only a a pilot, um, we only got a few few responses. But we can see that mums and dads rather the online version for the paper version. There's Two people that have sent me rather the paper version. I'm not sure why, but we all have our own opinions. 
So that was how I use astro education within school. So I, I'm now going to speak to you about how you guys could um, use astro education within your classrooms uh, more than you do now. So has anybody heard of classroom? How many of you use it within your school? Excellent. So I won't go into that too much. If you would like some more information on that, um, I'm over there afterwards and I'm more than happy to speak to you about that. So I've been working with a school in London who wanted an e-portfolio for their students. So what this would do um, ultimately is to replace the exercise books which, which students have been using for years. So this is a site which students um, customises their own. We've got up here all of the applications which the school use. So this would essentially be a landing page for um, an, an, a unique landing page for every student. We can see here what their targets are and what their working app rates are. And we can also see here some information about the student. So when schools have offset in, what they can do is they can send offset to the e-portfolios for the students and then from there they can view um, all of the work that the students have done because all of the work that the students have done, they've linked back to their e-portfolio. So say that a member of staff was to set something um, within the classroom, students would then be able to hit add file on this site, so there would be a button up there saying add file from Drive, they hit that and then they select the file that they want and then that's automatically added in. If they wanted to, they could add in a, uh, a the, the, the description of that file, um, but if you opened up that file, then you'd be able to see all of the feedback which member of staff has given. So it organises all of the work and keeps it all in one place, which also helps with students' revision. Staff can also customise the ePortfolio site at the start of the year before the rollout and they can add on um, specific things. So here's a revision site which I don't have access to because I'm, because I'm not at school. Um, but on there, there's information about that subject um, that they've done in that year that the teacher has made a, a site for, um, for revision. So that's ePortfolios. And then you can also make um, school intranets and other things through, through Google Sites. You could use Google Forms to uh, to track your students' understanding of something which you have just taught them. So um, I've made here a Fire of London quiz, because that's something which we've just done in, within class. So that's everything that I want to ask. So I'm now going to go to preview, and I'm going to fill in that form. So my name is Barnaby, my email address is Barnaby, at xma.co.uk and the fire of London I think was 1700 it was caused by a bakery and it was in Pudding Lane so I then submit that my submissions then go into a responses spreadsheet which is here and what I've done is I've, um, I've gone to add-ons and I've added on an add-on called Fluberoom so as I'm a teacher, I'm able to see all of these submissions in this format. And what Fluberoo does um, is it gives, uh, it, it, it automatically marks the work against the master, master key. So this first one on the responses page is actually a master key that everything is then, is then answered against. So say that in here you put 1666 and that would be marked as right. And then if in here you put the bakery, that would be marked as right. And if in here you put that, then that would be marked as right. So we go on to the grading, grading page, and we can see there um, all of the grades from every student that's filled it in. And the orange bits here are the bits which need uh, to be re-looked at um, in the next lesson, for example, or even within material for revision. So the reason that I put in there my email address was because I've now been sent a, um, my grade. So that's automatically been marked without the member staff having to do anything. So I can see there that I need to have a look back at when the fire of London was, because I got that wrong. But then I can see that I got the other two 
right. And that's something which you guys can make up in your school through Google Forms. And you can send them out through the classroom as well. Um, and then all of your students who you want to have access to, to it have got access. <coughs> Google Drawings can be used to replace uh, worksheets within the classroom. So um, if you're going to volcano labelling, what you would do now, I'd imagine, um, is you hand your students a sheet of paper that would have all of this on it, and then they would have to, to cut and stick the answers for the, um, for the areas of the volcano. So I'm going to move that to there, because that's the ash cloud, and the vent, no, whoops, that's the vent, and then that's the ash cloud, and that's the side vent. And again, all of this can be sent out through the classroom, and if you did that, then what would happen is the teacher would have access to your work, but it would also rename it up here, so it would be volcano labelling hyphen student name. And then the teacher can see that, and the student could also link that back to their ePortfolio site, um, so everything is all linked back. Google Docs, I'm sure many of you have used Google Docs uh, collaboratively within, within your schools, but here's an, here is an example in XMA of how we, use, we have used Google Docs. So this is uh, the script for, the, for a slide deck that I've done. And we can see down here uh, some feedback. So Lee is from Google, um, but if we scroll down, then I've added in, um, I've added something in, and Lee's added more in, but I can add a comment in by highlighting that, hit comments, and then I can plus uh, Nick Cox, who's, who's also shared on this document, um, and I'll just send him this as a test. And I'm going to hit comment. Now, as I've added in his email address there, he will get an email now that I've just added on a comment onto that doc, so he will then have a look at it, and his icon will appear in here. But what you can also do through Google Docs, and some of, me, of you may know this, is you can see um, who's done what in a, in a doc. So say that you've got students who are working within some groups of six, and one student says that they um, have done all of the work, you're, you can then go back through revision history, Um, you can then go back through the revision history and see what student has done what. So um, if we select this one, we can see that Matt is in purple, Nick was in orange, and I was in light blue. So there you can see um, what Matt's done in the purple and what Nick has done in the orange. So that was collaboration in docs. Now this is really cool. This so um, say that you guys wanted to go on a uh, on an art trip uh, at the uh, exhibition that you wanted to see was in Amsterdam because it was the Van Gogh Museum. What you can do through the Cultural Institute is you can actually go there without having to leave the learning environment. So what you can do is you can search for an artist and you can zoom in on their piece of work as if you were actually there like that against their artwork. So there's an example which I wanted to show you that um, is of Vincent van Gogh's The Bedroom. And what you can see is that is where is the way the, 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 the brush strokes have been done. So what your students can do then, as they can zoom in so far, um, is they can see, is they could then screenshot that and then stick that into a slide and then, uh, th 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 then they can annotate that piece of work through there. Here we go.
So in here, there's a search function, and, and then you can search for your artists, um, and then that will show their artwork that they've done, and also a description of, their, of that piece of work. If you wanted to see more of that, I'll hopefully get that to work after this, and that will be on the stand just over there. Um, Expeditions is really, really cool. I know you've got to stand here um, on virtual reality, but there is a, a video down here of how Expeditions has been used so far within schools, even though it's only in the pilot phase. I did have a video of how Expeditions was working within schools, um, but it, it won't load for me. So that was um, my story of how I've used that for education within school and how it could also help your school further if you're already using Google Apps and how it could help your school if you're just starting Google Apps. Thank you very much. leaders, they, they, they grow the apps from, say, uh, from bottom up and, and research the stuff mm. and, and try and use these in classrooms. Are there any apps you thought, oh, we could really use those in school? Um, I quite like the idea of um, the site. Mm -hmm. that, that was, I don't think I've used that one. So that's having a revamp um, over the next few months and there's a preview out now um, and it's a huge... Um, edit to how it is now um, and it would be even easier to make a website in the next few months if you the new one looks a lot more professional as well. Oh well. goodness yeah yeah it really does yes far nicer any other questions I've, I've got one um, when it comes to virtual reality, mm -hmm. the exhibitions, it'd be great if I was um, a geography teacher or mm. you know, a history or something like that, but I'm not. Mm. Um, what can it do for people who are English teachers and such like? So you could go to the globe eventually, maybe, um, and take your students around there. Um, or um, you could go to, to the that's the only one I could think of. And, and drama as well, obviously, help. teach drama and music. Yeah, so if you went to the theatres or if, if you were studying something which was based on a specific area, um, then you could go there through expeditions and experience it without leaving the classroom. Is it possible to, um, for students to actually um, create their own virtual reality expeditions? You, so what you can do is you can make photospheres through, through your mobile phone and then view that through, through the virtual reality headset. Um, but as far as expeditions goes, um, that's more of a Google thing. Um, so then they have all the stuff for that. But I don't know what's going to happen in the future. It may be that they open it up. I don't know. There's loads on there at the moment. So there's a Pearl Harbor. You can go there and see where the water plays. Um, you can go to the wall of China, um, the, the, the Barrier Reef, loads and loads of places. And then it will only expand. I have heard that, um, I have seen, uh, I'm not sure if it's to do with VR, but 
where you can do a virtual experiment, for instance, or a virtual, if you're a, a surgeon, a virtual operation, a bit like being a sort of pilot and doing a, mm. you know, the flight simulator. Yeah. So I, I heard that, that this morning, yeah. Um, so there's HTC Vive, which I think one of the guys who might be in here has been to see, um, and that looks amazing. So when that is released, um, using that within education and using as a consumer device as well, will just open up virtual reality, I think. So virtual reality could help the kinesthetic learner, for instance? Yes, I hope so. Hmm? Well, we'll have to chat about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you do now, or are you thinking of maybe making it so you can, like you said with Pearl Harbor, you can actually go back in time? Could they do that? <coughs> Not like literal back in time, but see those things, a reconstruction? Yeah, so um, I would have thought that that would be something that they are having a look into. Um, I don't see why not, but I can't comment on it because I don't, I don't know, unfortunately. Hello, I'm Andrew Fowler, I'm the head teacher here. Um, I'm really interested in some of the things that you showed us and the school applications, the options, and that sort of thing. Mm. But when I see something like that, uh, two thoughts come to my mind. One is, wow, this is very exciting. It could involve, it could be much more efficient. Mm. And the other is, I'm worried about data security. Mm. Um, can you tell me a bit about uh, why I shouldn't be worried or why I should be worried about that? Sure. So um, all of the information that is on your school's apps for education domain is owned by the person who owns your domain. So that would be the school. So anything that's uploaded into there, any student information, that's especially of all of that information from, from mums and dads, that is all owned by the school and it's only accessible by those who the owner of that spreadsheet shares it with. There are um, central policies, sorry, just to add to that, there are central policies that you can apply which will um, or can help you to manage how sharing is allowed so you can uh, prevent students from, from sharing information outside of the school domain, for instance, they can't share it with their own Gmail account. Uh, similarly, with um, staff, you can uh, set up things so you can, you can allow certain domains for things to be shared with, they can request access, uh, that sort of stuff, so it is manageable. There are also um, other tools um, that are out there that help to uh, analyse how you are sharing things within your uh, organisation, um, some of those costs. Money, of course, um, but there are tools out there that can help to manage that exposure and, and make sure that you understand where things are being uh, um, shared and, and what's being shared. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you might not, but we might need to hear you. Um, um, as a maths teacher and a photographer as well. We do have to do like drawings and things. I'm wondering if there's an app um, where you can use like on a, on a tablet that you can write on, because it, the, the volcano thing, for mm. example, in an exam, you wouldn't necessarily be given that. You'd have to reproduce Draw, that. Yeah. So I'm wondering if there's an app available that allows you to physically write as it were. There's not that I know of off the t t top of my head. Um, but I will have a look into it and see if there is. Um, so. What uh, Google are doing is they are moving the Android. They are making Android applications available through the Chromebooks. Um, so I'm sure that there's loads and loads of Android apps out there that are able to do that that you could then do through through the Chromebooks. In fact, PDF free. PDF free. Yeah. It's on. It's on the top apps for education. And my other question is, uh, Google Sheets, I don't know if anybody else has used it, it's yeah. not as powerful as Excel, mm. and I'm wondering if there's going to be, if it is going to be as good as Excel. We, you know, we have um, Year 12 doing coursework on Google Sheets, but they're ending up having to do some of it in Excel, mm. some of it on Google Sheets, because it just does, it's not as powerful. Yes, um, so if you're doing heavy uh, calculations and things like that with formulas, um, then no, it's not quite up the job. The way that I uh, explain how Google have made their, their suite of tools um, is Microsoft Office have made 
um, all of these applications which have all of these features in, but the average user would only use the, the, that many features. So Google have taken that and stuck that in in what they've made. There are add-ons and things, um, as I mentioned on that on that slide um, with Blueberry. Um, but whether there's add-ons out there that would do what you want, I, I don't know. I'm quite loud, actually. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, the the uh, the Google form uh, uh, drawing, sorry, you showed. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm interested in that. But once you've moved everything, you mentioned uh, I was teaching you, and you had to label, I don't know, characters, quotations, mm. and stuff. Um, then you've uploaded it to your Google um, your ePortfolio. How do I get to market? So so what would happen? Um, you would send that out through the classroom. Yeah. Um, so you would own the master document yeah. and then you'd make it so that that would make a version of that same document for every student within your class. Um, and then as you own the master document and as you're the teacher in the stream, then you'll have access to every document that your, your students make. So when they hit turn in, um, then you can mark their work. But equally with, as it is now, with dot sheets and slides, is you can access their work while they're working on it. So it's it's, it's like that. We we do that already in, in Dane Court, but when it comes to marking the actual drawing, once you've looked at it, is it sort of a putting a virtual comment on the right hand side? Mm. Like you've got four out of five, but I've got to mention each one. Once you've got you know, like 180 people to do that for, how do you mm. do that? Oh. Um, so yeah, so it, it would be um, through the commenting and feedback. Um, but that would be the same as you would do it within, if it was in an, in, in an exercise book though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's the same as it would be in an exercise book, but, but you can't swivel over it if you like. Mm -hmm. um, so you highlight the bit that you want to put a comment on, and then you just leave some feedback on the side. I suppose the main thing is it saves on, on paper and exactly, yeah. so it's, it's paperless. Mm. And also you don't, have to walk around with exercise books for all of your your students. So it's less heavy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 less heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So and cheap. All it is that you walk around with is a one of these or or a one of those. Yeah. John. Good idea, so yes. So Google Forms with that one, so it's self-marking, which means end of. So um, you would like that, send out the, the, the drawing and then... Ah, yeah. Yes, so you could do that, and then what you could do, instead of that formula going into a, um, into a spreadsheet, what you could do is you could then set up a merge, um, but once something is submitted in the form, then that would make up a dot of all of, all of the students' answers that they could then add onto their e-portfolio that's specific for that student, and that could be emailed to the, to the teacher. Um, of the student and also the student themselves and the net version of it. Yeah. Just a quick question with, with regards to sheets. Mm -hmm. Are there any planned improvements towards it? I don't know. Be Sorry. Just because in terms of collaborative, it's, it's nice to be able to all access the same spreadsheet for tracking um, assessment. Yeah, so you can do that now through, um, through the share. But one issue that we find just a simple thing, like I said earlier, about not being able to rotate text in the cell. Mm. It's just a very simple thing we can't do, which means that when you've got a, a, the way we use our personalised learning checklists, you put the questions of, a, of an end of your <coughs> test into the top, mm. and you end up with questions at this line, yeah. so your cells are this wide, which would be a very simple fix mm. if there was an improvement. I will see if I can find out for you and let you know. So that's a, that's a huge thing for teachers. Yeah, yeah. For, for, for Anthony, one of the things, yeah, it's, it's, 
lots of people would, would love that feature. So, uh -huh. so I've, I've, really I've kind good. of got around it simply by wrapping the text in the box. So rather than just having one line, that you just have a deeper yeah. box yeah. with just on multiple lines in that cell. It's just a, a way around it at the moment. I mean, I've, I've looked a lot on, 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 the, on YouTube at how to do it, and people have suggested drawing in the text box and rotating that. Mm. Um, and the reviews that I was reading said that it's been like since 2012. Oh, right. I okay. thought that by now we have done something about it. Mm. Another app that I think a lot of teachers would really, really appreciate um, would be uh, classroom seating with photographs. Mm. You're not the first that's asked for that. Um, we all need it. Yes, yeah. Especially when it comes to the boss to come in, you need to have certain data. Mm. You've got to pr produce these, these sheets like that. Mm. And sticking, cutting, and pasting, and, and writing all over it would do my head. So, within the stream in Classroom, you see this here. Oh, you can't see it now. There is a feedback button. And all of the feedback that you submit um, is submitted and actually read by somebody. Um, and if what you've asked for has been asked for a lot, then they will work on, on making that. Right, so if I get every teacher. Yeah, to why do not? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so that, that is actually um, how the. the, the, the this tool has been developed. Um, so it was made initially with teachers and students um, from loads of different schools and seeing what they would want. Um, but the way that Google have worked on this and expanded it and added new features um, is through the feedback. An example of that is um, adding in new teachers. I do you have a slide somewhere for it? Scheduling, that was another thing that was asked for by teachers and submitted in the feedback. Here's something else that was asked for in the feedback too. Um, so initially, in the first rollout, it was only one member of staff that you could add in. Um, but schools wanted to add in heads of department and other teachers for that subject. So feedback was sent in and then it was worked on to enable you to add in more than one teacher. So here you can see that there's the main teacher uh, for the class and then I've added in three other teachers. So that could be the head teacher um, and then that could be head of department and then, and then that could be someone else who, who teaches the same. Does anybody have any more questions? No? Actually, we can give uh, Barnaby a round of applause.